Now, I want to look at, you know, the D latch that we had, right? We had, so what we said was earlier, we had a, okay, this was the latch, this was clock, and this was D, and this was Q. Now, if we look at our SR latch, we have two inputs, set and reset, and we have out two outputs, Q and Q bar. Okay, this is my SR latch. Obviously, the input that is missing is the clock, right? So, how do I incorporate the clock into this particular system, right? So, let us consider the NAND based SR latch. Q, Q bar, right? Now, what I want is, I want to connect an external signal called the clock, right? When the clock is 1, I want my inputs to go through, right? Either this D or S or R, whatever, whatever it is, I want the change in S and R to go out to Q directly, right? But when the clock is 0, I do not want this to happen, okay? So, the desired behavior okay i'm talking of a positive latch sr latch okay with clock so the desired behavior is when clock equal to 1 I want S comma R to go to Q comma Q bar. So if I if I do that set reset operation, it should go and alter Q and Q bar appropriately, right? Whereas when clock equal to zero, I want the latch to simply hold. It should be no change, right? The other way to say this is, this is transparent and this is opaque, okay. So how do we achieve this now, okay. So one thing I can do is, I got to gate my S and R signals using this clock. Now how do I gate it, okay. That is, I could gate it in two ways, okay. I will take my S like this using AND gates R right and give it to my clock ok. Now if I did this then what is going to uh, uh, be available here I will just call this S underscore clock and this is R underscore clock ok. So just let us look at this behavior when S is equal to when the clock is equal to 0, the output of the AND gates, okay. So, let me call this N0, N1. I will call this AND gate 0, AND gate 1, okay. So, the AND gate A0 and A1, the output will obviously be equal to 0, okay, if clock equal to 0, right. So, we are talking of this condition. Now, let us go back and see from our function diagram what is the state that you know the input to uh, uh, the SR latch right if that happened to be 0 0 we land up in this invalid state right so this cannot be the hold state right or rather it cannot be the hold state I will just call it the invalid state right and therefore the best way to overcome this problem is to replace this with another set of NAND gates instead of AND gates, okay. So I call it S
R, okay. Uh, I give a clock like this, and I give a clock like this, and this is going to be S underscore clock, right? I'll call it S underscore clock whole bar, R underscore clock whole bar, right? Now what you see is when the clock equals zero, right? My uh, output of the NAND gates, right? So I will call this N two and N three because I am calling the other uh, uh, NAND gates N zero and N one in the SR latch, right? So output of N two and N three, if clock equal to zero, is going to go to one. That means those two NAND gates that are driving my SR latch will go to one one state, and one one state. we already know from the function table is actually the hold state for this nand based latch okay and therefore the simplest implementation that we can think of is this s r and then clock and i get my sr latch but of course this function table you have to be a little careful because we have reversed the polarities right so what i'll do is i will just make a copy of this and we'll write out this function table more specifically in the next page okay so function table so i will call this s r and i also have clock right and q and q bar right so if clock happen to be zero then it does not matter what s and r are the output of uh, n2 and n3 will simply be 1 1 and therefore it will be in no change state okay now if clock is 1 and s and r happen to be 0 1 right so what is going to happen my output of n2 gate right because s is um, you know s is s clock is 1 one of the inputs to n2 is 1 s is 0 and therefore the output will simply be um, i'll i'll color code this okay so that we'll 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 have it correctly written here 0 1 so if this is um, 0 1 then i'm talking of 1 and 0 yes okay so i am now talking of 1 and 0 and therefore this output will be 0 comma 1 right so this will be 0 comma 1 uh how is that because n n1 one of the input is zero that means the nand gate n1 will go to one one is fed back to n0 input to n0 is 1 1 and therefore that will be in the uh 0 1 state okay so uh this also i will color code with this next i will say um and of course here by the way if clock equal to 1 and then you come back to the sr state right which is uh, is this sr um 0 and 0 right so yeah this is interesting so let us look at it if the input happens to be 0 and 0 to this uh, particular latch when the clock equal to 1 the output then is going to go to uh, n2 is 0 n3 input is 0 and therefore it will go to 1 comma 1 right and therefore this will be in no change state so what is the no change state it will be in 0 1 if s equal to 0 r equal to 1 previously right uh on the other hand if i go from 1 0 s equal to 1 and r equal to 
okay so i will say this is the next combination then the output of n3 has to be 1 and this will be 0 uh, because input to n2 is going to be s equal to 1 clock equal to 1 and therefore the output will be 0 and if this is 0 then this will be 1 and this will be 0 so therefore this will be 1 and this will be 0 and from here if i go back to my 0 0 state then i am going to hold the data um, you know in the no change condition which is 1 0 if s equal to 1 and r equal to 0 previously okay and uh, most importantly you notice that in the condition when uh, uh, when your uh, the the hold condition for this sr latch is going to be 0 0 okay unlike the other uh, sr latch the unclocked sr latch the invalid input was uh, uh, 0 0 but here it is the hold condition which is going to be 0 0 it is the 1 1 that is an invalid condition okay so 1 1 1 this is going to be invalid uh, maybe i'll write that in a different line i'll write that in red 1 1 1 is going to be an invalid condition right and uh, what what we have now achieved is we have now been able to control this sr latch uh, with a clock so we can not only do clocked operations but we can also set and reset that output q and q bar just by controlling you know with these with these inputs very easily right now what is the relationship between this sr latch and the d latch that we studied earlier right so in the d latch if you first of all if you remember we did not encounter any invalid case right all the input combinations were perfectly legitimate and valid how is that basically you know we did not have any of these crazy you know race conditions that were happening and therefore uh, not race conditions these uh, noise dependent uh, invalid conditions that were happening and uh, so in order to ensure that doesn't happen here all we have to do is ensure that s and r are complements of each other right and therefore in order for me to just treat this like a d latch okay i am going to do the following right i give n2 and n3 but this one i am going to invert and give here of course this is my clock right so this is n3 and i have and this is n0 this is n1 this is q q bar right so here what we have done is we have simply said s and r are just complements of each other uh, s is basically d r is d bar and therefore what i get here is a if i just consider the input d the uh, clock and q then i get back my d latch and therefore i can implement this d latch using an sr latch as well 